during the years you were in uh, the time you were in Los Angeles, what was the major story that you handled at that point? Well, the one I like to talk about anyway is uh, Marilyn Monroe's death. And why I like to talk about it is because we beat the tail off AP on that one. So, in what way? I mean, well, the story broke very late at night, early in the morning, on a Sunday morning, and I got a phone call from our tipster. Our tipster was a a, a Los Angeles Times person, and he's now deceased, so there's no problem in, in talking about it. But it was not unusual. We. As you know, in, in the wire service base, the Associated Press is, is, a, is a membership operation, and all the newspapers are members of it. They're not clients, they're members. And, they're, and one of the parts of being members is they have to service the AP with dupes of all their, all their copy, all their stories, even on occasion go out and cover for AP if there's no AP person around to cover for them or duplicate their, duplicate their coverage. And so the only way an organization like UP would do, could do it not having full-time police beat, full-time that sort of thing, we'd, we would hire tipsters. And uh, they were working newsmen. And they and, were paid. And they were paid. They weren't paid, a, they weren't paid a regular salary or anything like that, but every time uh, they called with a, with a tip, we might give them the magnificent sum of $25 or something like that. We had one by the name of, uh, on the police beat at the Times at that time, by the name of Spud Corliss. He called me at home, and as I recall, it was around 1 o'clock in the morning, and he says, Hank, Marilyn Monroe is dead. He says, check Beverly Hills Police. That's all he said. So I, we, we staffed the overnight in those days. Overnight was on a Saturday or Sunday overnight. Overnight was a period roughly from 12 midnight until 6 in the morning, when supposedly nothing ever really happens. Wrong, but nothing supposed really happened during that time. And we staffed that period seven days or seven nights a week. Uh, but with only one person on that coming in on Saturday midnight and there until Sunday morning at eight o'clock. And I called my overnight person, a man named uh, Eddie O'Connor, also now deceased. God bless Eddie, I'll tell you a little story or two about Eddie later on. But uh, uh, I said, Eddie, Marilyn Monroe is dead. Uh, I said, and I dictated a bullet to him. I, I, by then, the first thing I did before I called him, I called the Beverly Hills police myself. And they said, yes, I didn't get any. And I said, how did, did she die? She said, we don't know, but she is dead. So I dictated a bullet to Eddie, and I said, now, Eddie, here are the list of staffers. At, at, at 1 o'clock in the morning, only, only people are going to be using them be radio stations anyway. So there was no newspapers going to be. And television. And television didn't, didn't do didn't, that, that. No, not at that time. So I, so they had the bulletin, and, and, and so I said, Eddie, here, I gave him, rattled off six people, six staffers to call, and I said, I will call the, the others from home. Uh, and, and, and I said, I, and I told him where I wanted them to go. I wanted one of them to, to go out to Joe Finnegan, who was a staffer and later a columnist for TV Guide. You remember Joe? I said, Joe, you go to Monroe's home. Called Vernon and say called Vernon in and Vernon Scott, who was the other Hollywood correspondent and a much better writer, I must admit, than Joe. I said, Vernon's and with the many contacts also, much many more contacts because he'd been doing the business, doing the entertainment field for a lot longer than Joe had. I said, uh, have Vernon come in and be the writer and also get on the phone and do the phone reporting. And I called. I said, I want Joan Sweeney. So go someplace. I went down the list. Joan Sweeney later became a staffer for the. Los Angeles Times and was with the Times for a number of years on a general assignment. And then I called six or seven on, and then got in my car and we lived in Sherman Oaks at the time. And uh, I, I think I made it downtown, the UP Bureau, and it, it, in those days was out in the, uh, out in uh, 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 Hollywood there, right next to the, uh, next to the, uh, Hollywood Citizen News. We had our own little building there. I don't remember that. Wilcox? Early. Yeah, on Wilcox. Yeah, it's right around the corner from you know, you know. And I made it downtown, I'll swear to God, in about five minutes. And dressing as I went along as much as I could. I think I was only partially dressed by the time I got to the bureau. At least I had the, I had the important pieces of clothing on. So, uh, so by the time I got into the bureau, we uh, uh, I followed very quickly by Vernon, got in a few minutes there. 
And anyway, the way we, we, we were all over that story. And finally, uh, Joe Finnegan called when he got out there. He says, they're taking Marilyn Monroe to the morgue. And he, by then, still they didn't know whether it was suicide. And, well, they still argue that point today, or whether yes. she OD'd or what. But I'm still one of those that's convinced it was suicide. So I told Joan, being much closer to the morgue than, than Finnegan, uh, to get over there as fast as she could and to get in. She got over there, and there was no gate open or anything else. And it had a big wire fence, as I said, around the whole building, about six feet. Joan, God bless her, Joan Sweeney, God bless her, climbed over that fence. And I don't know how many scratches she got in the way. She never showed me any, so I don't think she got any or not. But when she was there, actually inside the office, when, when they brought the body in, so we had a beat on that, too. Now, how did we beat, beat AP on that one? We beat AP by, well, more than, more than an hour, of course. It was a time of night that it didn't hurt AP that much, unfortunately, uh, uh, on a Sunday morning at 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, but it's, uh, but uh, for reputation, it, it, it certainly didn't help them. Uh, the reason we, we beat them, in all honesty, one was our tipster. Uh, though I'm sure maybe somebody from the Times that had been on the overnight by themselves and might have thought to let AP know if they had heard about it. Uh, but our tipster called us, as I said. And then in those days, uh, there was a chief of bureau at AP by the name of Hub Kibi. And Hub, I guess, was trying to save money, so he discontinued staffing the bureau on the overnight. There literally was no bureau in there, but he was supposedly to have been alerted any big news that happened by the Times. Well, they didn't alert him, I guess. So by the time the message got to, to Hub, it was it was uh, a good uh, good hour, maybe more, before they even could start on the story. Uh, I don't know if it was just coincidental or not, but two weeks after that, Hub Kiwi retired. Yeah.